Okay, uh, Richard was here with uh, a special tool. I'm getting some special tools myself, but um, yeah, he just bought some. And uh, we took off the fuel line, and we got plenty of fuel. Now remember, with um, getting a car started, you need at least oxygen, a spark, and fuel or an accelerant. So on the VS Commodores, this hose on your left is your feeder line and this as far as it looked like when it was pumping is your return line the bottom one on the right so what i'm going to do it's still not starting but we're getting plenty of fuel so that's one thing out the way next we're going to still see i haven't checked these fuel lines oh sorry the fuel rail or the injectors so that'll be the next thing so what i'm going to start to do is take off the air box Take off all these connections there. Um, also gonna check in here and see if anything's blocked or stuck. Um, obviously my coils have been ordered. These ones all spark very well. So we'll see how we go. But first I'm going to remove the air box, which I'm getting soon I'm getting the uh, whether you call it the SS or the the more up, uh, the more upmarket um, airflow um, thingamajig, whatever you call, it, um, comes up here in sort of like a half triangle thing, and then it comes down and just seems to give it a little bit more air for the airbox. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull off this line. We're gonna hit these flat nose um, screws. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty much the air box, this, this hose here, and we'll take off there and then we'll start on the, the main body of the engine there. Okay, we'll do that now. Okay, so just pulling off the air box. Um, if someone hasn't done that before, you've got your clips, it's got the four clips on each side, which is one is under that air line there. So you've got a nice brand new filter. I pretty much did a lot of things on this car already. So it's got new plugs, new leads, new fuel filter, oil, you know, the works. Um, oil filter. Um, so we, on this engine, since I've had it, I've never done the fuel rail or the fuel injectors to check if they're pumping out properly. So we're going to get into that. So nice. Oh, it's getting a little bit dusty, considering it hasn't really drove anywhere. I might, uh, I'll probably get the air blower out before I put that back. Stick that on. Stick that on. So, um, next I'll be, it's good with these things, um, just tighten it back up and then just leave them on there so you don't lose them. Um, but next I'll tighten that up a little bit and then I should be able to just un unbolt that screw there right there and um, loosen that off and then I should be able to pull that whole line off do that now okay taking that off remember what I said like it's good just to tighten these up when you're taking them off and then they stay on there stay on there yeah um, there's also one more uh, plug like this and that just goes onto the actual bottom part of the mixer thing there whatever that's called I, know, I, feel, I always forget parts names but anyway that sort of gives you uh, I think it's called a map sensor or something like that could be right anyway goes into that Oops. There goes. I can go there now let's have a look in here so this is this is the butterfly now I've heard not to spray carby cleaner in here Heard if you just um, if there's any like, dirty parts, just get some petrol and a rag and just do a physical clean. That's what I've heard off uh, a few links. So yeah, but the ne anyway, next thing I'm going to do is get my Allen key and um, yeah, and take off these top bolts. This is how you're supposed to, I think, Rich said, get to the fuel rail. So. Yeah, that's obviously you can see it going onto the fuel rail, and you've got your fuel injectors. 
So my main aim today is just at least get down to the fuel rail and see what's going on. So step by step. <laughs> Got those uh, five bolts out. They are all exactly the same. Um, next I push back this circle clip thing. Just squeeze that in and pull it back. Um, I think my next approach from what I can see is I don't really want to take this off this, this main body on onto this. I think I'll go for the is I think one one two and three I think there's three ten mil bolts on the back of this that hold on the phone and you turn it off. Um, I think it's three bolts that hold this main part onto the carb, your butterfly. Also disconnected these two hoses, which go, the purple one goes on your left, the blue one up to the very top. They easily just unclick, pretty easy. And like my Divi van, there's a lot of dirt and mess, so when those parts go back on, I'm gonna have to give them a good old cosmetic, as you always. So um, what I'll do is disconnect there's three screws, so yeah, there's one, I don't know if you can see my finger, where's my finger there? One there, there's one underneath this, and there's one on the side, and I'm sure these two lines, these two lines have to unclip as well. But we'll take out the three 10 mils, which hold it onto this main body here, and um, yeah, let's see if we can pull this thing off. Yep, so um, there was three 10 mil bolts. Now what I've done is that practically just falls on the side. And then, yeah, definitely those um, two cables have to come off. So the black one up the top and that one, they just look like push clips. You could probably just, without cutting yourself, probably use the um, foot and a screwdriver on that. Um, that and that black one has to come off but they they should just slide forward or just unclip just there somewhere just holds on those two cables so do that now okay so those two um clips they pretty much stayed on they just pushed forward uh, with a bit of uh, movement which was good i don't i didn't want to really adjust all this sort of stuff just want to keep that as is now I'm just trying to think see what else is holding this on I'll be back, but yeah, definitely this hose will have to come off. Um, yeah, it looks like there's the bottom of the fuel rail, and that's the hose that's going on. It looks for that. Um, looks like all the bolts are out. Um, it looks like there's a either a vacuum line or something underneath there. Anyway, we'll definitely see and let you know back soon. Okay what I've done, I took that air box off, I only had three 10 mils. Now this has popped right up. Um, the other hose I forgot to show was, I disconnected this one, this has just got one of the your normal clips. Um, still got to get that underneath one to come off but she is free. It just like you just put some pressure on this fuel rail and it just pops all off, pretty good. Very happy. So, see what else needs to go on. We're back. Look how far we've got. Very good. Okay, so we've just pulled off this, looks like another breather hose. And this one on the back. Um, looks like there's a springy thing in there. But, I think the last two hoses is this one. And this one. And there's one on that metal bit here. So that's it, and that should all come off. Okay, just a bit of an update. Um, don't take that hose off, and don't take the hose off on that middle. Just disconnect it from the actual petrol lines. And also, I put a bit of tape on one side, so I know exactly which one I stick it back on. And I'll put a bit of tape on the actual line there on that side. So, yeah. 
um, I'll just show you the tool. One sec. This is um, that uh, fuel removal tool. Um, seven pieces, and it's got one for every sort. Richard lent me his. I've ordered one on eBay, which will probably come at the end of next week. But um, on this tool kit, it was pretty much the smallest one. This one. So thanks to Rich, I can get I got my fuel lines off earlier. But you need one of these. I mean, there are DIY people just make up their own. It's possible, but these are probably the most safest option as not to damage your actual fuel line inside. What makes it lock on? So that set of tools is good. Another guy, I think it's called uh, Wicked something. He also showed. Um, um, on servicing these a little bit um, you can take two of these bolts I'll try and put a link on his channel in my description um, you can unbolt these and then use a bit of petrol and stuff as well to clean them but if you look or don't I'll put this on a yeah I've got a rag here anyway um, the rag out for a second it's not the biggest of rags One sec. I've got to get another rag. One sec. I just didn't want to put that uh, other side down straight on concrete. All right. So uh, I don't know if I just dirtied that one when I moved it around a bit, but um, yeah, the fuel injectors they look pretty dirty. Doesn't mean they weren't working properly, but never know so I'll, tomorrow I'll get some uh, some of the carby clean fuel stuff um, and uh, give these a jet out now to take these off I'll show you in a second but if you look back on the engine block I'm talking about with that dirty um, uh, fuel injector around the very edges focus come on focus you want to focus? You going to focus? Yeah, there. There's a fair bit of grime and dirt around them. So, tomorrow I'll get a vacuum and vac try and vac as much as I can around the edges and then I'll try and cover those holes and give that a bit of a clean. And obviously, you know, years of, years is like, like, like years of uh, obviously non-cleaning. Like the DV van videos that I'll do, you get a bit of gunk build up. But on all in all, um, even if this wasn't starting, I think it's a uh, good idea to check all these um, uh, fuel injectors. So they're not hard to take off if you haven't done them before. Um, let me see if I can grab one. So there, there's a clip just here. So that's that's what you gotta just wedge out. I should pop off. Oops, and it popped off right over there. Oh. Okay, so they're just a small little square square one. Uh, I can go there. I've already I've already pulled one off. Um, but yeah. I'm also going to show what I saw on a YouTube video, how to clean these. So 95% of the time you don't have to get new ones. It was a good video too because what happened, which I'll then upload pro tomorrow, is you stick um, a wire on both sides of the battery and then you have the open wire plug on one side and the other and you'll hear what they call a click and it'll click which means the injectors open then you stick the straw part of the uh, carby cleaner or whatever you want to call it and you try to get a V shape looking jet coming out of it but I'll be cleaning these up and um, yeah seeing how they go so that's her that's her so what I'm gonna do is just rip all these injectors off and that'll be for that'll be enough for tonight See, so while the injectors are out, I'll just uh, 
cut up a few of these uh, rag bits and pretty much fold and twist and turn so they're a bit wide so they don't obviously fall in and uh, covered all the inlets of where they where they would actually sit in because there's a lot of uh, I've already vacuumed to try and clear any loose stuff up but um yeah I want to clean all the dirt around where the injectors actually definitely sit in there because it's not pretty um, I'm gonna get into a bit of cleaning and then uh, yeah we'll go from there I am going to uh, make a video on how to clean injectors that I've seen on YouTube. I reckon it was a brilliant idea. And um, we'll go from there anyway. Okay, so I've blocked this uh, center part of the manifold up with some tape. This is painter's tape, which is really good. Um, for the injector holes, I had them blocked up as you saw before. And then I got a rag with some petrol. And... Um, put a bit just with the finger and then stuck it from the very center of the hole whoops the center of the hole and then wiped back and I cleaned up all around the surface area so all those are nice and clean now so, so instead of having sitting there with little bits of grease marks um, it's now all clean so when I put it back on it's not going to push dirt in there at the same time so I think that's good enough for not having taken the whole manifold off and what I would really want to do is clean it all but then then if I start I'm going to want to clean the whole entire gearbox and yeah too much um for what I want to do anyway um but they're nice and clean now and awaiting the um reinstall so I'm going to try and do the injectors now cleaning and show you what I do as far as what I saw in a YouTube video of uh, cleaning them out. Very good. The OBD2 reader says that I'm misfiring on cylinder one and two. I just cleaned this one out. We're going to watch how I do this one. Um, so basically you take, uh, you could also do this with a 9 volt battery. This is a lot easier so you're not fumbling around with all the wires and trying to hold it all together. But what I got here is just some wires coming off the 12 volt battery. And I'm going to just kind of shove these in there. And if you listen, you can hear that valve inside of the injector open up. So got it open right now. I put some uh, tape right here to make somewhat of a seal. It, a seal. A, Give it a little better and pressure. So what we're looking for is a triangular spray. Oh, get it right away on that. We'll run a little bit through there. That looks real good. And you're good to go. And that's it. That's it. Nice. I'll never buy another injector again. That's awesome, dude. What's your name? Blake. All right, Blake. Nice rig. Yeah, thank you. What year is this? This is an 02 5.4. It's got a, a dirty gas tank, so uh, I've had to do this little trick, uh, you know, a dozen times already. And uh, I got pretty fast at it. Yeah. Well, you're pretty fast. I barely caught you for the last one. All right, thanks, Blake. Yeah. Got the bottom part on so far. All the injectors are in. So it's always best, I think, well, I found it easier, having the injectors attached to the rails and then uh, position them ready to go into their holes or the inlet jets or whatever they're called. So, yeah, she's come up pretty clean. All right, that's all put together now, all cleaned up. Next, I'm putting my upgraded airflow box in uh, yeah so here we go so this is the upgrade of the more higher airflow so stuck with the original top part of the box and that's the original under part that goes with the top airflow 
everything else matches in. And what happens with these is you get a wider section of airflow in them where the other one pretty much just had a square box just behind the headlight, which is like this when you take it out. But I like the look of it. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna try and start it, and then if it starts, I'll put my Autobot uh, engine cover back on. Let's see, I'm nervous. Use. I have a leak in that one. Doesn't look like a leak in that one. I can't really see if there's a leak in that one, but I heard it spray on this one. A leak. Not happy. Because you know what happens. You gotta take everything off. And then it could happen again and again and again. So that rubber seal in there mustn't have worked or must have, mustn't have been very good. And I put new ones on too. Blame an owl. These are the buggery parts. This is a really there's a lot of there's a lot of things involved to just get to one fuel injector. You gotta take off everything I've shown. All that, all that. I feel like starting it, seeing if it'll start, but then I can catch this engine on fire, which I don't want to do. Oh my goodness. This is the very annoying parts of cars. Mm. Looks like it's time for strip down again. Okay, good news. I've got no fuel leaks. This is what I actually should have done. So my, my mistake of uh, doing this is uh, hopefully you can learn if you do this. So uh, pretty much just uh, attach your, um, your, your fuel line and your fuel injectors. Um, bring, these, bring this down so all the injectors are nice and snug. And then, uh, yeah, just test out if there's any shooting of fuel. Rather than put everything on, good good that I've, uh, I could leave the box, but um, I pretty much had to take off the speedo cable and all the bolts in there and the top and all that sort of stuff. But to save you all that work, yeah, pretty much when you get this on and sitting where you think it should be all right, test your fuel injectors. Just give them, make sure that you prime it a few times, and uh, yeah, that was a pain in the neck, but having to but it's good to learn as well so I don't mind learning the hard way as long as I learn and now I know in the future what to do so now I'm going to put it all back together no fuel leaks off any of the fuel injectors so very good okay, so with all that work done everything's done cleaned changed blah 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 no start still so I had ordered new Bosch coils I did pull off each two and went down them. Shows good spark between them. Uh, coil packs are known on Commodores to still go. Um, I'm going to replace them anyway. But it might be just a simple fuse too that's not igniting somewhere too. So if this doesn't make it go, I'm going to have to check the fuses because fuel pump. I've done spark plugs, I've done leads, I've done fuel filter, I've done oil filter, I've done new oil, I've done everything, minus the coil packs, as far as I know. So, I'm going to change those coil packs, I've done a very small one, this one, I don't even know what size that is, um, I can't really see from this direction, anyway, so I'm going to replace them, and go from there. <laughs> 